Hey everyone, it's Barry here. Welcome to my Virgin Kitchen. I hope you are well. First thing, I don't know how long the pugs are gonna stay set up there. Ding, 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 but they seem pretty cozy. I might keep them there. That might be their bed place. I can use the pallets of stairs. Anyhow, today's video is something I've been asked to do for quite a long time. And although it's festive, I feel like this is not just for Christmas, just like a dog, it's for any time of year. This is my top five kitchen gadgets uh, that I actually use, all right? But rather than just making this a compilation video, I thought I'd do one extra bonus one uh, that I haven't shown you yet, which is quite festive indeed. This thing. You're gonna have to bear with me as I adjust to all the different lighting. Right now, the sun in this studio, I have to shut the blinds. So you can see a little strip coming in. We'll get there. And if it don't, it's quirky, right? That's what you guys like. So this gadget um, is from TK Maxx, which I uh, did a video recently, what was it? The Giant Mince Pie. And I said about TK Maxx, you guys are like, what, that's like TJ Mix or something like that. So don't know why they're called TK and TJ or TB or whatever, um, but these are an amazing place to find the most craziest gadgets because I might try and find this on Amazon. It might be there but it's highly likely that a lot of these are ones that just go straight to TK Maxx and you'll never find them ever again so this is a this is gold it's called the nutcracker um, looks wooden crack nuts that's probably what a nutcracker does by suck UK nice brand name twist key for action this is half toy half gadget which is the best thing ever so basically you shove you shove your nuts in there now these nuts are really hard to get you can only get them around Christmas time you might remember the other gadget I did where you pulled the thing up and let it go these are the nuts it was designed for crack tough nuts crack shack noir dur that sounds so much cooler crack shack noir dur that's like an action film uh that's it then it's got the twist for action turn here okay so look you can see before you buy that you're happy that it can actually break your nuts up. You guys doing all right up there? Huh? I think you're quite happy actually. <laughs> we turned into Cooking With Dog all of a sudden. Cooking With Dog is a legitimate channel. Honestly, check it out, but then come back to me. All right, so what we need is uh, some, no, that's my receipt, no it's not. It's uh, £4.50 off when you buy Gillette Fusion shaving blades. Um, these are walnuts. It always makes me feel like I'm saying that funny. Wool. Wool. Wool nuts. Okay, so we're gonna crack these up. Pretty butch darn things indeed, but with a nutcracker's help, robotic styley will do it. Nutcracker? I've never seen the nutcracker actually either. This cost me 10 quid. And I'm gonna give it away to one of you guys actually in this video. I haven't worked it out yet, but I will. Uh, I wanna do Gadget of the Week next year. Every week I'm gonna be doing a live stream giveaway, okay? You're gonna love it. You're gonna hate it at first. You're gonna hate it at first. Just like a lot of things this year, but you're gonna love it. Yes, you are, please. So you take a nut, okay? And then uh, we put it in here, in the hole. All right, so let that hold it and wind. Oh, I'm very, very excited about this. Are you ready? Here we go. Yes! Where's it gone? We got some nut there, and a bit of nut down there on my fake vinyl laminate stuff. It's not actually real laminate, couldn't afford it. But look, that's the shell, sweet. And then, I see you guys, I see you guys excited up there. Look, that's amazing. Mmm, that works a charm. Here we go. Oh, yes, get in there. It just wants to keep going. It's effectively like a man, man gadget. For women as well, of course. That has worked an absolute charm. A little bit messy, use a chopping board. There's probably still time to get this for Christmas if I can find the link. If not, go to TK Maxx. And if you're watching TK Maxx, why don't you pledge on my Patreon? Right, let's give this away. Actually, a really cool gadget. The first person on YouTube, this has to be on YouTube, uh, to put to write down below, not first. It's kind of annoying when you do that. How do I reply to that? First person to put my middle name gets this, okay? I'll message you directly and I'll try and send it in time for Christmas so you can crack nuts. I'll even put some nuts in the packet if you want, these actual nuts, okay? Let's get into it then. So these are my favorite gadgets that I use both here in the barn and at home on a regular basis. They genuinely help. There's a few notable exceptions though. 
the Diablo Toasty, uh, which was so fun. I still make loads of these, bread, Nutella in there, beans, anything like that. Super good, I uh, tested this and also did a live stream with Mrs. Barry. The Myco uh, Toasty Maker, where you make a microwave toasted sandwich. Um, I actually had the first one of these in the world and we helped to get it crowdfunded, that's cool. And actually one of the last gadgets I reviewed, uh, which was the Popcorn Popper Popper, which I'm gonna do the first live stream that I do uh, next year, I'm gonna do the giveaway of this. So keep an eye out on that. Every week we can do a gadget of the week, then a cook along and it will be, the giveaway will be someone who actually cooks my recipe and sends me a picture, okay? I want, I want those hardcore fans getting this stuff. Seriously though, this was awesome. Uh, so I actually helped sell out the gadget as well. How cool is that? I know some of you still aren't convinced about Gadget of the Week and I will do some compilation ones from time to time, but a lot of you were. So thank you. I love you. This is like Rudolph love. Let's have a moment to pause and reflect upon the gadgets that didn't work quite so well, uh, notably the peanut butter making machine. I am going to retest that, I believe in it. A lot of you guys gave me advice on that. My butter foamer thing, which we tried so many times and eventually got it right. And the utensil uh, scrapey scrubbery thing, which I actually used here in the bar and I still have it. I don't use it to brush my teeth, but it's kind of rubbish. That just didn't stick to my sink at all. In fact, I've no idea why I'm keeping that either. So to be honest, I'll probably give that away on a live stream next year as well. Right, just to add guys, uh, in true reality TV show, these are in no particular order, okay? I just, I love all of these. They generally are awesome. So first up is uh, Lavoons. I think they're called Lavoons, yes. They are levelers. I've completely forgotten the name. I'll double check in a minute. Uh, and they come, they're measuring stick things. Uh, but you can go with it. They are amazing, so good. They need to do bigger ones. They need to do bigger ones and put my face on the box. That's, that's fair. Yes, they are called Lavoons, I just checked. So what you do is say you're like, oh, I need, um, I need some baking powder by Dr. Utka. Other brands are available. We've got a quarter of a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, a teaspoon, and a tablespoon. Also in mils, I didn't see that before. 1.25 mil, 2.5 mil, 5 mil, and 15 mil, which is amazing, liquid and dry. You can snap them off as well, so we'll do that. We'll go for, right, I want a teaspoon of uh, baking powder. And you go in like that, and you're like, oh my gosh, I've got too much. So then you push with your finger, ready? Push it off. Okay, some of it goes on the floor. We'll hoover that in a minute. But look, you've got a real flush, like measure. It's just so addictive. I love, I love this so much. Apart from when you get it on your hand. Got that, straight down in there. And that, my friends, is your uh, teaspoon of baking powder. So, uh, cocoa powder as well. I've never done it before, so I'm gonna try and show this, where you go, oh, I don't think I've got quite enough. So you, you level it off. And look, you can see the gap. You can go, no, I haven't got my tablespoon of cocoa powder. So you go a bit higher give it a little shake and push it gently. And that's it, that's your tablespoon done. That is one of my favorite gadgets. I'm gonna leave all the links to my favorites down below, but these are called Lavoons. I know you can't really see me or the queen right now, but there is a lovely setting right there. Look at that, that's nice, that's nice. There are lots of ways that you can slice and prepare an avocado. You can use a knife, you could use your bare hands. There's so many gadgets that I've reviewed uh, and there's loads more that I have to still review. But this thing, I forget who makes it, don't worry, I'll leave a link down below, is the best one that I've used so far. Um, I think it's, oh, it's by Kuhn Recon. Um, it, I think they make really good gadgets, to be fair. They're from Switzerland, um, although it's made in China on the back. I love it's got the avocado on the bottom there. I'm sure this had a purpose, this whole, uh, maybe just for hanging stuff, you could hang it somewhere. Okay, just pretend my fingers are screwed. Hanging it, all right? But this gadget's got a nice serrated edge, so it's still safe, you can saw into it. You can get the stone out with this, sharpie point things, and then you can scoop it out. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Just a general point though, every avocado I get here in the UK just generally is so disappointing compared to those epic avocado burger things you guys sent me links to. I'd love to make one, but it would look like green mashed potato if I did it. Just, yeah. Right, let's do it. I just need an avocado. Said this joke, I think, when I used this tool last time. Yeah, he's not the most attractive bloke, but he does avocado. They're like dinosaur eggs, don't they? Really cool, rustic. Reminds me of the film Cocoon. Um, I believe you can normally tell the ripeness of an avocado uh, by the stone there, if it's sort of the colour and it's popped out as well. But I think it is all like the depth of it and the colour. That it's, um, it's kind of like a nice paley colour right there. And also, if you're like me, you just see on the store it says ripe and ready. That's when you know it's 
generally supposed to be ripe and ready. One thing I will say, it's quite cold in this room, which is a good thing. I think sometimes it gets mushy when it's hot. So we use uh, the serrated edge. Let me slice, <laughs> we slice into the avocado, like so. Yeah, I can tell it is still mushy, great. It's all lies. Ugh. Bear in mind, as always, it can be user error. I mean, look, that's not the, eh, it's not too bad, but look already, you can see how mushy that is, okay? But it's not about that, it's about this thing. So, they've used the serrated bit there, we use one part of it there to have our, have our fun. We use the sharp point, this is my favorite thing of the gadget. You go like this, you, you have to line it up. Okay, it's in, yeah, stone out, stone is out, and look, pops off, and then you use the scoopy end thing, like so, straight in there, scoop it all around, and then you've got an avocado, look, look at that, nice big carve like that. There is another avocado tool which is quite popular, um, look at this. It does work so well. And actually, I probably could do the avocado burger, but a lot of them, that, um, they have on the end these like lines, so what you do is you scrape through it, and then you've got slices of avocado already, which is good, but if you want to make like big fat chunks or do whatever you want, this is why I love this gadget. It just looks weird, doesn't it, though? I feel like I need to get like a, another one of those cow drawings there, but of the dog, just as a bit of a laugh. It's just really basic, like, head, toes. If any of you want to do that, I'll give you a gadget, okay? And then I'll make it into a canvas, and I'll put your name on it or something. Right, for my next gadget, I need uh, garlic, but just the clove, okay? So you put, um, you saw on a hacks video I did with Mrs. Barry recently, you put the bulb into a box. It's cold out here, <laughs> but I'm freezing. All right, and you, and you shake. See? Unravels your garlic. Oi! What are you doing down there? You fancy getting out of your bed, did you? I just smacked myself on the head then. This is actually my favorite out of all these gadgets. The other two are amazing as well, but I just have used this one so, so much. All right, he's got back in his bed. Not sure for how long. I've got a really weird lunch coming up. Avocado and nuts. Chopping board. If you love garlic, you would love to smell that box. All right, so our garlic is here. Let's go get my favorite gadget. You've seen me use it loads in recipes. It is this thing by Joseph Joseph, which I really hope sponsor a video for me next year. They just do the most high quality stuff. Uh, and it is quite expensive, but it is really, really, really worth it, okay? Uh, it's called, I think it's called a garlic rocker. I've forgotten. Boston? Do you know what it's called, mate? He doesn't know what it's called, sorry. Take your, your rocker, push down, and then go like that. Okay, look, your garlic is in there. A little bit at the bottom you need to scrape off, but you can keep doing more. And it pops up like a little flower. It's great. And what I love is like, I've hoovered all the garlic up. You just sort of press it down and it pops through. It's kind of like a Play-Doh maker with garlic. You know, it's there, it looks great. It works an absolute charm. So that, combined with this method that we found out about the other day, means you don't actually, Oh yeah, you smell of it, but you don't actually touch the garlic. Just scrape it off with a spoon. It is so good. It really saves time in the kitchen preparing. Speaking of which, I'm gonna call it vegetable slicer. I actually, the gadget video that I use this in, I don't think I put it in the thumbnail. Loads of you go, Barry, where did you get this thing from? I actually can't remember the video, so I'm gonna put the link to this or something very similar down below. Mrs. Barry and I wanna marry this, all right? We have both mutually agreed to divorce and marry this vegetable chopper. It is such a time saver. Very dangerous though, very, very dangerous. It's awesome. Of course, I was joking about the divorce. I love Mrs. Barry, she's nice. I'm punching above my weight. Well, I'm working on my weight. <laughs> Ooh, that'll do. I'm never gonna give that gadget away, just FYI. This thing is amazing. Uh, so you open it up, as I say, it's very, very dangerous. You've got this lid bit, okay? Not much goes on on the lid bit. But then you have uh, one, two, three different types of blades. So you've got like a squarey one. Square. You've got like a thin, long, rectangular one, squarey one there. Uh, and then small squares, which actually, for the garlic clove, would also work really, really well. So what you do is you slot them uh, in here like so. I'm actually gonna go wider. No, actually, let's go for squares. I fancy doing squares. Push it in, push it in like so, okay? Uh, bizarrely, 
there is a razor blade. Oh, Mrs. Barry did warn me about this. One of the blades, oh my gosh, it's on this one. Can you see, there's one missing. Uh, one of the blades has come off. Now, you could be have a great shave for this. Don't worry about your £4.50 uh, razor Gillette voucher. Use this. Uh, be very, very careful. So um, that's possibly one downside to it. Keep your eye on it. You don't want to cut your finger. And another reason I won't be using that one. You also get um, this brushy thing, which is for the blades. It works really, really cool. I'm just gonna need to do a bit of prep. Because annoyingly, I can't train him to uh, cut vegetables yet. Boston would be an amazing vegetable slicer. Attention to detail. So this is one downside to it, in that you do actually still need to prep the vegetables. I mean, most skilled chefs would say, if you've gone to the effort of getting a knife out, uh, then, you know, what's the point? And I do actually agree with that a little bit. But then if you can't slice an onion and you make it look more like the elephant man's head, then I think it's justified, right? Because I enjoy making these videos as much as you guys watch them. And trust me, I know you guys like them. Um, there's just something fun about it, right? And also, the topic that I say quite a lot at the start of most of my gadget videos is it can help people with disabilities. A lot of these gadgets can, and I'll be like, oh, that gadget's rubbish, or 10 gadgets you'll never use. Like, shut up, these can actually help people. And uh, yeah, don't put it on, like you can see this is a slippy surface. Don't put it on that, because if you go like this and it goes wee, that'd be amazing for my video. I could completely stage that. But I'm not really that smart to do that. Onion. Down, ready, not even gonna look. Boom, huh. something flew. <laughs> Straight through. You see that? It is amazing. So you can open this up, you've got your chopped onions all in there. They've been pushed through the square maker thing. Sensational. You know, if you're saying, hey, my mushrooms, no, I want them sliced thinly. <clears throat> Take that blade out very carefully. Uh, get your other blade in there. Maybe put two down, right? Just go for it and go, ha, ha, yeah. Boom, straight in there. Yeah? Can you tell how much I love these gadgets? I've gone through so much pain for you guys to work out which ones I like. Peppers, straight down again. Boom. Look, I feel like I'm doing like shopping channel or something. Bizarrely, I have had invites to go on shopping channels and do gadget reviews. If I did it though, I'd have to say, guys, give me some keywords, some phrases to actually say, and then you'll be like, yeah, I'm thinking of you. Uh, carrot, the most butchest of vegetables, and one that I personally have never used on this. We're just gonna snap it, Rudolph style. Oh, my sliced carrots, I don't want square carrots. I'm not a ready meal, I want sliced carrots like I'm at my, my dinner table. So you can line it up with the actual slice marks and go, right, okay, if I have it like that, I'm probably gonna get a decent sized sliced carrot. So, this is pressure. You see, it's this bit that actually grips it, okay? Push it down. Is this gonna work? Am I gonna catch my finger in it? So many questions. <coughs> Ooh. Did I just break it? <gasps> no, I didn't. I kind, of, I kind of bent it. So carrots, maybe. Yes. Oh, actually, yeah, if you do get anything stuck in there, as I say, there's this brush. I should have used that then, rather than the knife. Uh, but there we go. Get all the blades out, take all this out. Look, and the, the carrots are sliced, actual sliced. I love it. Last but not least in this uh, gadget rundown is, yes, you guessed it, the uh, apple peeler core slicer thing, uh, which for me, I've used it so much, it's actually broken. This gadget though has not really been plain sailing for me. Uh, for example, the suction thing on the bottom, sometimes you stick it down, you suction it, and it sticks. Oh, <laughs> it's working. Okay, sometimes the suction thing, I think it's when you're actually working it, uh, doesn't work. But I'm not only gonna do an apple, we're gonna peel slice core an apple, we're gonna do a potato, because apparently you can make awesome wedges for it, although you do end up coring it. <laughs> it's not coming off. Amazing, that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to have a handle here that you wind, which makes it easy. So bear in mind that this isn't gonna work. It's gonna work, but it's not gonna work as good. You push this in, you pull that out, you shake it all about. Uh, you've got three very sharp prongs here. Uh, we find this really useful for making uh, like an apple pie because you just get shards, shards? You get slices of apple straight away. But what you do is you line up the bum of the apple, push it straight in, uh, like so. There's a bendy thing here that, this actually peels the apple, it bends. Actually, let me just turn it around. See that? This, this thing, and it adjusts depending on the size of your apple, so it's gonna obviously come up to about there and shave the apple. It's gonna give it a nice clean shave, Gillette style again. And then it's gonna go through this hole, which will take the core of the apple out. Now, sometimes the apple's on ideal shape, so it doesn't always get it fully, but you get the idea. Down that goes. 
All right, here we go. We wind the handle. This is so good. And then look. I'm gonna stop it there. I'm gonna turn it around so you can see what it's doing. See this? This doesn't feel right for me because I'm left-handed. It feels left for me. <laughs> look, see? Look at that. And now it's going through the core a bit. So let me turn it around again. Go all the way through. Straight there. There we go. And what I do love about it also is that it makes your apple look a little bit like honeycomb. Uh, ooh, is it sucking? Suck, suck. <laughs> and then look, I pull it off in one motion. That sounds wrong. And there we go. We have actually got the core. We've done it good there. We've got the whole core, the seeds and all that on there. Uh, to get that off, hold that down and go, poof. You don't need that. I'm surprised the dogs haven't jumped out of their beds. But you are left with an awesome apple. And I'll tell you what, one thing I have done, put this um, in the oven, sugar on there, uh, a little bit of caramel in the middle, sit it on a the base there, a little bit of apple at the bottom to plug it. Gorgeous. Okay, it's like a pimped baked apple. Not only that, you've got an apple xylophone. Mm. So good. We're going to uh, pierce a potato on here. The annoying thing is that it is gonna take a section out of the potato. It's gonna peel your potato for you. Amazing. I think someone also asked, can you do this with an orange? An orange wouldn't really, nah. But if you want uh, a really cool potato, you know, this is a really nice way to serve chips. Like you could have this, you take it off there, Pat dry that to get the starch off, okay? Looks a bit like a pineapple as well. Pat dry that to get the starch off. Oil, salt and pepper, roast it in the oven like 25, 30 minutes. Unbelievable. You've got like a potato spring. Uh, and then also do the same, because obviously there's no pips and seeds in that, but you've got yourself an epic chip. All right, so I uh, hope you enjoyed that rundown, folks. Don't worry, I will be doing some more compilation ones. Maybe I'll get all my cheese grating ones and do my favorite cheese grating gadgets amongst the gadget of the week. Um, I've had a really good year this year, and also there's been some changes and some not so good times, but I'm really looking forward to 2018. I hope you guys are as well, right? We're gonna have some, ugh. Thanks, mate. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe for regular recipes and food fun. Uh, don't forget to follow me on social media at My Virgin Kitchen. If you've seen any cool gadgets, let me know, all that stuff. And we'll see you next time, right? <coughs> Bye, guys. To be fair, like I said at the start of the video, I have got a blooming weird lunch. Anyhow, see you later.